to a single phase. It's only doable with generators that's got a six, uh, 12 wire configuration and not these with a 6 wire configuration. You must uh, excuse any noises. I'm going to start the generator to show the voltages. Then I'm going to change the wiring and I'll start it again to show the voltages then. And yeah, let's go. show you this. Currently the generator is wired in the series star 3 phase 4W mode. We're going to change the wiring to the parallel zigzag single phase wiring. Also to note with this, if, if you have a total of your three line amperages say 40 amps each once you've converted it to single phase you don't get all three the amperages added together it's actually derated by 70 percent when you do that or to 70 percent so we should get about 80 or 90 volts in the single phase configuration uh, amps And while I'm busy, I suppose I can talk a little bit. If there's anything you guys want me to show you how to do it or explain how things work, um, I'll be more than happy to make videos to explain and to show how to do things. And yeah, if you've got specific problems that you want me to help with, just put in the comments and I will make a video about it. And okay, just as a matter of interest, the reason we chose the parallel zigzag and not the double delta, the double delta will actually still give us two phases, although they will all be 220, but it won't be usable in a single phase house. With this configuration now, this generator will put out enough power to power up a complete household with 
usually houses get a 60 amp supply from the municipality and we'll be able to give more with this single phase unit where if you left it in the three phase configuration you would have only had 220 volt 40 amps available on one of the phases you would use and the rest would go to waste okay Okay, these two wires here, they go to your voltage regulator. It's just to keep your voltages correct. Okay. U1 and U5 must go together. Let me just get a side cutter to cut off these cable ties. we get them together Now let's do the W side to here, so we've got our voltage going to the regulator. So there we're looking for W5 and W1. Okay, this W5. And W1. Okay, U2 and U6 must go together. We've got U2. Let's find U6. Stuck off all these bits here. This won't need them. Just now. Okay, 
Uh, U2 and there's U6 okay before we put that on now after the U2 and U6 we've got V2 and V6 V2 and V6 and as you can see there they should be connected now we'll use one of these little plates here put that on Always make that make sure that all your connections are secure. Those loose connections causes a uh, heat buildup and that eventually burns off terminations. So it's always advisable when you finish just go through all your screws and connecting points and make sure they're all tight. can go to V5 and V1 this uncluttered a bit V5 and where's V1 Side, we've got W2 and W6. That should be our last two remaining wires. Also, a link. As you can see there, they connect it over there.
Okay, and we've got two unused studs which we will use to mount all these little plates that we're not using. Let's get a little bit more thread needed. And last one back. Okay, these we also make sure they tight, not because there's any connection issues here, but we don't want these plates to come loose and vibrate into the live wires on the other terminals. <laughs> 